Hey, this is Mark coming to you from Baker's Green Acres. Today is the 24th day of February 2018, and I have some information to pass on. Um, I had told you that I would be meeting with Jim Hines. He is uh, one of our candidates running for governor. Um, the election's coming up here this year. Um, and I had an appointment to meet with him on the 22nd. Uh, this, so this was just a few days ago. And uh, we met down in Clare at the Big Boy restaurant. And uh, it's just the next county over from where I am. <clears throat> and I'm here to report to you on how that went and uh, what my impression of this individual was as a, a servant and maybe a potentially a, a governor of the state of Michigan, somebody that we can get behind, somebody we can vote for. So um, our meeting was at 1130. He was on time. It's a big thing. Um, a little bit about him, I found out that he's an obstetrician and he's been delivering babies for 30 years. Um, he's spent a good, good share of his life uh, doing uh, missionary work in poor countries and most of it centers around medical and taking care of people, you know, serving people. So I was quite fascinated in that because I I have a little bit of a background delivering babies myself, and I've also done some missionary work, and I'm fascinated with both. So, um, so anyway, um, I, I had a I have a criteria that if I'm if I'm going to vote for somebody because of where my life has led, you know, I have certain things that I'm looking for in somebody that is going to be our our top servant or our governor. Right? the top public servant in the state. Um, and so uh, we exchanged formalities and all that stuff. Real nice guy. It was, it was me and my wife, him and his wife, and then three of my friends. And so we get a table and we sit down and all that stuff and get order coffee and all this. And, uh, and so I, said, I just said to him, Jim, I got to ask you a couple of questions Otherwise, we could just sit here and talk about babies and eat hamburgers, you know, but we're really here for a purpose, and it was to, to check him out and see if I'm able to come to you and say, uh, hey, this is a guy worth looking at. <clears throat> because, you know, there's been a few, and, and I've been honest with you, I've said they're not worth looking at because they're not going to serve you per the employee's handbook, which is uh, the, the U.S. Constitution. If they say that they're not going to do it, then... Don't give them your vote um, un un unless you're invested in their corruption. And then you might want to give them your vote. You know, I mean, it's there's uh, all kinds of people out there. But the vast majority of us in the state of Michigan are in the strata that my wife and I come from. And it's, you know, we're working people and there's 95 percent of us are in that boat. And we expect that our public servants will serve us and not the other way around. And we also, we, we know baloney when we see it, all right? We know baloney when we see it. And I think that's why it's important for me to come to you like this because uh, um, it's hard for everybody to meet with them. And, uh, you know, you can go to the guy's website and all this stuff and you can find out all of his accomplishments, which I, I was impressed with his accomplishments. But that's not really what I wanted. I wanted to look him in the face. I wanted to look into his eyes and see if he was who he said he was. Um, so I said, I got a couple questions for you. I, I, and uh, he said, sure, go ahead. Um, and I said, if you're elected governor, you're going to be required per state law to swear an oath to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States. I said, first of all, are you willing to do that? And then second of all, are you able to do that? And then third, is there any circumstances to where you think you might not do that? You know, you might suspend, um, you know, steps one and two for step three, if you know what I mean. And he, sa he, he says, whoa, okay, and backs up a little bit. And he says, well, first of all, I've read the Constitution. Which that was right up there with being on time for me. I mean, he has read the Constitution, which I think there's a lot of people that haven't read the Constitution. I encourage you to do that. 
uh, download it. It's a page, you know, Bill of Rights is a page. And he said, yeah, I will. I will. Now, this is coming from a guy who has been a servant all of his life. This is a guy that's being expected to operate um, by a guideline, you know, as a medical doctor his entire life. And he's still got a really good practice going. He's got a good small business going down there in Saginaw. So, and I'll get into that. It might be in another video. I can only go 10 minutes with this. And I could probably make about six videos about this guy. And I said, are you able to? And we talked about that for a little while, but he came around and he, I'll paraphrase him right now. He says, I, I know that I'm not going to have to use my abilities as a, a black belt to persuade people to see it my way. Because the governor has the authority to, uh, to say no to anything that is not constitutional, that violates the constitutional rights of the people. Um, he said, he went on to say, he says, these rights are not rights granted by the Constitution. They're not rights that are granted by the government. These, these rights are given to you by your maker, by God. And he expounded on that quite a bit. I can't take too much time on this. Um, so, and then the third part of it, he said, and, and this kind of got me a little bit. I hadn't thought about this, but he says, you know, I, I, don't, I don't agree with everything in the Constitution. And uh, he says, but that doesn't mean uh, I'm not going to fulfill my oath to protect and defend it. He says, if there's something I feel strongly enough about and I don't agree with it, and there's enough of us that don't agree with it, we need to start, start the process of changing it. And uh, that was what I wanted to hear. And the conversation went on from there. And uh, when we were done, you know, they finally had to kick us out of there. We were there three hours with him. And uh, there was the seven of us, and we really had a nice time. It was really a very pleasant time, and I almost felt like, well, let's, let's go back over to my house, and, you know, we'll continue the conversation. But he's got a motor home that he's traveling the state in, and he's driving it himself. His wife is his secretary and chief bottle washer. And uh, they're really nice people. And this guy is the real deal. And uh, I, he's got my support, un, un, unfettered support. I'm not holding anything back. And uh, I mean, people can do what they want. I mean, we all have a sacred vote. And uh, if if I was coming back to you and I couldn't endorse him, I would have said, well, I can't endorse him. You're on your own. Vote for the least of two evils. But in, in my mind right now, there is no other candidate to vote for because the, the two other Republican candidates, or three other, have violated their oath of office already. You know, They are career politicians, and all three of them are looking for their next job. This guy has a career field. He's an obstetrician. And uh, he's got a lot of qualifications. He doesn't need the job of being uh, the governor of the state. He's doing this because he felt as though somebody's got to do it. He's called. Um, and and I, I can respect that and I can understand that. And I also have some more input on that, that concept of being called or being summoned to, uh, to do what you're supposed to do. Now, this guy feels that he was called by, by God to do this, all right? A lot of people are going to kind of wince at that. But we all have our God, all right? And he says, okay, I'll do it. Well, he could have said, I don't, I don't want to do that. But he said, okay, I'll do it. So either way, before his God, he's going to get a well done, my good and faithful servant. You've done what I asked you to do. Whether he wins or not, he has done what he was asked to do before his God. Another thing about that, he's going to take an oath before his God to protect and defend our constitutional rights. And I'm going to have to cut it off right there because Mr. YouTube won't let me go over 10 minutes. So this is Mark for Baker's Green Acres. Remember, anyone can farm.